Hey everyone, welcome back to She Barb's Podcast. I am your host, Brooke Wright. Hey everyone, welcome back to She Barb's Podcast. Today's guest is Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brooke. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being a guest today. So can, you, so can you tell our listeners what inspired you to be a coach? Yes. So um, I am a coach in the mental health space. I am also an author and a blogger in that same space. Funny enough, that is kind of not, that's not my full-time job. I'm a software developer mm-hmm. by trade, but <laughs> I wanted to get into the mental health space because anxiety and depression have been things that I've struggled with my entire life. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've made strides in both of those areas, um, over the last like 10 years, I would say. And so along those 10 years, it was me trying to figure out, okay, what works for me? What doesn't, what strategies do I like? Which ones fit with my personality, which ones Mm -hmm. help me in specific situations. And then I wanted to take all of those learnings, distill them down into different formats, right? So I have two books out and then I have um, my blog posts. And then obviously I'm having conversations like the one we're having now on different podcasts. And then also Mm -hmm. the, the coaching arm of, of my business. So I talk with different folks who are basically in that in that practice, we're trying to take the ideas and strategies that are in my books, distill them mm-hmm. down and help folks kind of, uh, we're trying to see like, okay, a certain person that I'm working with has a specific kind of personality. And so mm-hmm. certain strategies that I teach are going to resonate with them uh, more so than others. So we're trying to figure out which of those strategies work the best. And then we come up with different plans to help those mm-hmm. folks in specific situations, right? So if someone says, mm-hmm. hey, I'm, I, I, I constantly get anxious um, and then we can drill down into like, what kind of anxiety are they experiencing? Does it, you know, is it perpetual? Does it come up in specific situations? If we were to, you know, drill down just to give spe- uh, like a specific thing here, it's like, if we were to say to someone, okay, it, it seems as though you deal with social anxiety, we could then say, okay, the next time that you're going to a social gathering, an event, some, you know, an event at the office or, or um, something that you have on your calendar where other folks are involved let's bring some of these strategies with us, right? Let's take them. Uh, so maybe it's like, w- once you show up, like recite a mantra to yourself. And before you get into that event, or before you walk through the door, you just whatever it is, you you, you mutter some phrase to yourself, you say, like, this event is going to go really well, this event is going to go really well, right? And just repeating that to yourself, to almost like train your subconscious mind to uh, believe the fact that things can go well, you can get through them without the anxiety. Um, so that's just one example. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know if you listen to my other interview, but he he does that with uh, mostly men because usually you don't hear about men having depression. Like men don't really say, hey, I'm depressed. I have depression. Like not that I've heard like the men that I've dated. They never said that before. But usually you don't hear men having depression and anxiety and stuff like and the guy that I interviewed before, he spoke mostly to men about depression, social anxiety, things like that. But do you mostly speak to men or do you speak to everyone? Yeah. So uh, a lot of good things to touch upon there. I think you were referencing Skip, the interview that you had done. Uh, I don't know exactly when it was, but it seemed recently, uh, it seemed like it happened recently. I was listening to that episode. He was a wrestling, a wrestler, a wrestling coach, uh, had written a book, was trying to help young men overcome depression. Um, Mm -hmm. I would say to to your point as well. So like that was a that was a great episode. I enjoyed uh, listening to that one. I, I I love hearing those kinds of stories, right? Like um, mm-hmm. depression is something that I deal with as well. Mm-hmm. I think actually the numbers. So if you look at like statistics, mm-hmm. right, more women tend to experience depression than men do. But yeah. at the same time, it's it can be hard to like know what the real real numbers are because in our society, right, men are taught to push things down, to not feel emotions, to not want to report them. So I'm not mm-hmm. saying that the numbers are necessarily wrong, but it's it's possible that more men are out there experiencing depression than are reporting. It's it's possible, right? So at the very least, um, I, I I mean I've experienced it on my own. I, I've seen it uh, manifest in others where like they're you know they can tell that something is off, but they don't necessarily want to label it as depression because they're like, I'm not weak. I, I don't, you know, that's not something I don't want to put that label on it, whether they know that consciously or, or not. Um, that is sometimes happening, right? We have this societal narrative of like men are strong, men 
um, you know, they, they don't get depressed. They don't, they, they don't experience these kinds of emotions. So it's like, uh, you know, man up, be, be a macho man or whatever. Right. And it's like th those narratives can be really destructive, especially when somebody is experiencing something that's difficult. It's like, if you think about an emotion that is going coursing through your body, right. I, sometimes I give the example, like if you are mad at someone and they did something to you, like, I'm not saying like, you know, uh, they struck you or anything like that, but let's just say like, um, I don't know, you had, a, a half eaten sub in the refrigerator and they, they ate it and it was your sub and you wanted to eat it. It's mm -hmm. like, if you feel that emotion and you're mad with that person, if you don't say anything uh, to the person or you don't do anything about it and you dwell on it, that emotion is going to grow and fester and get worse. Right. And so it's like, one of the things that we need to do is we need to just like calmly be able to confront the person and say like, Hey, like that was my sub. I wanted it. Like, I'm frustrated that you ate that. Like, could you please not do that next time? Right. And so uh, to, you know, move things back over to the mental health space. It's like when we are experiencing negative emotions, yeah, like sometimes we need to know like the threshold in our mind of like what is bad enough that I need to recognize it and deal with deal with it and confront it. And what are some of the things that I can kind of just like let pass right there, uh, minor annoyances or something like that. But when we are constantly dealing with depression, but we're not facing it, it can get a lot worse, just like that um, kind of that anger that's building inside of us. And so I think it's it can be very destructive for folks, uh, especially men to say like, uh, you know, push things uh, away, um, kind of, I guess, uh, it would be uh, live in denial of those feelings, right? It's I think it is helpful to have those conversations to say, like, I'm putting my hand up, this is how I feel right now. Uh, right. And in doing that, you know, folks will say, you can't solve a problem if you're not like, if you don't know you have it, or if you're not willing to admit it. So it's like, once you're willing to admit it, you can find um, some of the steps or solutions that are out there that might help you get through it faster. So I think that can be helpful for folks. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so um, can you tell our listeners a little bit about your book, Get Get <laughs> Out of Your Mind, Out of Your Head, Volumes 1 and 2? Yeah, absolutely. So I got a couple right here. Uh, so this is <laughs> this is book one. This is uh, Get Out of Your Head, A Toolkit for Living with and Overcoming Anxiety. That's my first book. came out in 2018. And then this is uh, my second book. This is Get Out of Your Head, Volume 2, Navigating the Abyss of Depression. That one actually came out last week. So that is uh, a little bit of a treat right there. I mean, it, it is a heavy book, right? Like it's about depression. Um, so I don't want to like come out here. It's It's tough to talk about sometimes where it's like, I don't want to be like, hey, yeah, my book's out. It's amazing. Like it's 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 a heavy subject, right? And uh, it's it's stuff that um, I think when folks read it, like it's not always going to be like rainbows and unicorns. There are uh, there are definitely unsettling moments. But I wrote the book not only for myself and to make sense of my experiences, but most importantly to help others get through some of those negative emotions that they're going through. So um, those are the books I, I basically write from a combination of like my own experiences and then some of the research that I've found as I've read books and journal articles, things like that. So, um, you know, for example, the first book, like I, I wrote it after, you know, dealing with anxiety as, as a teenager in, in high school and college and not really having anywhere to turn to or not knowing what some of the solutions were at the time. It was like, over as I kind of alluded to at the beginning of this conversation, it was like, as the years went on, I went into different situations, whether it was like going skydiving or going on a date with uh, a girl that I was attracted to or, or something like that and saying like, hey, I'm really anxious about this situation and I know I'm anxious about it. Like, what can I do? What what strategy can I bring uh, to this situation, whether it's some sort of like, um, you know, a, a breathing pattern or some sort of uh, like thought pattern that I'm running through my mind or something that I'm thinking about, some distraction that I'm, um, you know, focusing on in order to help me navigate away from some of those negative feelings. It was basically over the course of 10 ish years. Um, I went through enough of those situations where I felt like I had brought different strategies to them and come away with different insights where it was like, okay, I finally feel like I know what I'm talking about here. I want to share some of these strategies with other folks because I feel like I've struggled with this or I've, I've kind of suffered through this for 10 years. Uh, when maybe if I had a, a book like the one that I wanted to write, I could have compressed that timeline down, right? So that's what I wanted to deliver to readers. I wanted to say like, hey, if you're 20 years old and you're in college and you've been battling anxiety for two years, like pick up this book and don't suffer for another eight, don't suffer for another 10, right? Like uh, compress that timeline down, find some of these strategies that I've found to be helpful and maybe they'll they'll do the same for you. Ooh, that's amazing. So have you ever thought of making a workbook? Like, do you have a workbook to where you can coach your clients through or anything like that? That's a great question. I've had a few folks recommend that idea to me. It mm -hmm. is something that is like on my 
it's on my radar. I think the challenging thing for me is just the amount of time that I have, right? Like I, like I was saying, I am a software developer by trade. So that does take up a lot of time, right? That's my nine to five, if you will. And then I'm trying to write the, uh, the books, uh, do the blogging and anything else related to the get out of your head brand uh, mm -hmm. on nights and weekends. And so I spent most of the last year, maybe a little bit more than the last year, um, you know, on and off, depending on sometimes it's like you write a draft, you send it to your editor or, or something like that. Um, but I spent a lot of time in the last year writing the second book. And so with that finally being released, I am freed up a little bit to work on other things related to the brand, right? So I do have a workbook on the radar. Uh, it's a little bit different where like I have not, I've, I've, I've created a couple like worksheets for folks like coaching clients and also as like lead magnets in the book. If folks want to like, if, if you bought the book, there's like a page where it says like, Hey, download your free gift or whatever it is. Right. So there's some of those tools that are, that I've uh, designed before and created and whatnot, but I'm, you know, I, I, I guess I have to, this is my long way of saying like, I have to plan out what all the things in the workbook workbook would be. And then I would have to have to actually construct it. So it is one of the thing, those things that I want to do um, when it will happen. And if it will happen, that's it. I guess that's a different story, but I do hope to do that at some point. Yeah, definitely. So let me ask you a question within your depression, like you battle in depression, you never thought of suicide, like when you had depression, like it never crossed your mind at all, ever. It, uh, It's one of those things where like, the thoughts, the thoughts have been in my mind before, right? And it's like, you're in this depressive state, and it hurts so bad. And whatever the manifestation is, right? Like, for me, uh, most of my depression revolves around like, uh, and I, I, I'm just going to get into it. I know, like, it could be unsettling for some folks, but also I think it could be helpful for others. Uh, mm -hmm. Like my depression is mostly, uh, most of it there uh, is based around, like, uh, the uncertainty of, of death and the finitude of life. And when I dwell on those concepts, I go really like just to a bad, bad place. Right. And I think if you thought about them enough and you go down enough rabbit holes, you could almost get to a point where you say to yourself, like, hey, um, you know, the fact that I live so short and, and time is so long and uh, who knows what happens after death and whatnot. And like all these things that I'm chasing, like uh, if they are, you know, quote unquote, temporary in the long run, you could get to a point of like nihilism where you say to yourself, like life is meaningless, everything is meaningless, right? And so for me, my depression manifests in that form. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I talk about in the second book is that, that, that like, that manifestation of nihilism, that is a product of like the, the state or the mindset that you're in. And so it's like, when you move from a depressed state into a happy state, maybe that idea is still there in the back of your mind, but it's not pressing, right? It's not the the thing that you're obsessed with. And so mm -hmm. I focus a lot in the second book on like, how do you, but instead of saying like, I need to solve whatever issue it is in my mind, right? Instead of saying like, I need to solve nihilism or something like that. I say, instead of like focusing on that problem, focus on changing your state, getting back to, uh, you know, a better mindset, feeling happy in some, in some fashion. And so, um, <laughs> I know that's like a super high level concept, but it's basically like in the book, I'm, I'm confronting these three different, uh, spheres, if you will, or like paradigms, right? So it's like, there's a, a uh, there's a, a model that, f that like doctors, uh, and scientists use to basically like talk about where diseases come from, right? So there's one is the mm -hmm. biomedical model, which is basically like, uh, the idea is like diseases are a manifestation of the body. There is also another one called the biopsychosocial model, which is basically diseases come from the, the intermingling of the biological parts of our lives, the psychological parts of our lives and the social parts of our lives. So throughout mm -hmm. the book, I'm looking at, I'm looking at all sorts of different strategies in those three different spheres that we can use um, sometimes like at the same time or in combination with one another in order to change our states um, and, you know, not necessarily need to solve those problems, right? Like not necessarily saying like, hey, I need to find out what the meaning of life is. It's like, no, no, no. Instead of doing that, like change your state, get to a, get, a, get to a better spot by, you know, on the bio, biological side, right? Like we can exercise daily. Like that is a proven way of combating depression on the psychological side, we can stop ruminating on some of these scary thoughts and ideas. Right. And then on mm -hmm. the social side, like, I think, especially for folks during the COVID times, it's like, we are so isolated these days. Technology has made things much worse. COVID has made things much worse. Obviously there's a reason for that. Like we might not feel comfortable being around as many folks as we were before because we have this virus. Right. But at the same time, it's like, 
a lot of folks are vaccinated. A lot of places have mask mandates. You, you know, if you live in a, a warmer environment or climate, you can go outside with folks. The, the the rates of transmission are lower when you're outside. So there's all sorts of things we can do again to, ch to change state. But I guess, <laughs> yeah, I'm rambling a little bit, but at the same time, like going back to the question that you had asked first was like, you know, have I ever um, dealt with suicide, like th suicidal thoughts? I, I definitely have. I guess the thing is like, um, I've never actually wanted to like, I, it's never been, like they come in my mind and I want to get rid of them and they, they're, they're hurt, they hurt and uh, the emotions associated with them stink. But at the same time, like, it's not so, like, I would, I don't think I would ever act on them. Like I would never want to harm myself. It's, it's just like something that when I'm in this dark, dark state that like those ideas flood your mind. And then I'm just kind of like, I, I know I need to get out of this state because once I, once, <laughs> once I'm out of it, uh, those thoughts will leave me and that will be a good thing. Um, I think side note, it's just very important to state that like, if you find yourself in a, in a place where you are having suicidal thoughts, like, um, there is the national suicide hotline you can call, um, mm -hmm. it, the, the number is, uh, the number, it's very easy to find on Google. I would totally <laughs> recommend that. Like, this is a very serious yeah. subject. Like I'm not, you know, anything that I say, I'm not trying to downplay or anything like that. Like, mm -hmm. it's not one of those like, Hey, like you're depressed, just be happy. Right. Like, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very serious. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that might be enough on that one. That, <laughs> did I answer the question? Yeah. I think most people don't understand that, that like depression is like, you don't, you're not motivated to do anything. Like it's hard to have depression and then go seek a coach. Like you have to force yourself to go get help. Like, it's like people think that you can just go get help. Like whenever you're depressed and I'm like, it doesn't work that way. Like you have to force yourself to go get help. And it it is difficult to to explain that to people who don't have depression, I guess. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it you know, you're totally right. And it definitely is. And it's one of those things where like, you know, unfortunately you see on Facebook or Twitter or, you know, whatever social media site it is, right? Like somebody may say something about mental health, right? And then, you know, you get the trolls in the comments that are like, Oh, this person's just a wimp, like this person, you know, just suck it up and whatever. It's like, um, it, it, it maddens me when folks say that stuff, because obviously they're just very uninformed. Right. But at the same time, it's almost one of these things where like, if you don't understand the subject, you almost mm -hmm. have to live in denial of it, knowing that like depression is a very real and serious disease. It is a, a disease of the brain and body. And like, it could potentially happen to you or someone that you love. Right. And so like mm -hmm. one, like, in some ways, saying that somebody who deals with depression is like a wimp or something like that is a little bit of a coping mechanism or a way of uh, pushing it, pushing it away and basically saying like that, that couldn't happen to me, right? Because I'm not a wimp or something, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it really is, uh, it's a, a, a very serious thing. And it's hard. It's, it's just hard. Like if until you've dealt with it, it, it is hard to see inside of it. And I think that's a really important distinction to make. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I want to thank you so much, Brian, for coming on my podcast today and chatting with me. Absolutely. <laughs> you any, have uh, any other questions you got before we wrap up, or how are we doing? No, that was good. <laughs> that was good. You answered all of them. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks for having me, and I hope uh, I hope some folks that are listening, you know, find some helpful strategies out of this, and if they ever want to reach out, um, definitely uh, feel free to shoot me an email or uh, hit me up on yeah. social media, so. Definitely. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Perfect. Thanks, Brooke. Take care. You too. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to my interview with Brian. Like he said, you are you can feel free to hit him up. Um, I have linked his website within my website. So if you go on my website and find his name, it's Brian, then you can go on his website and his email is on there, I think. And within his website, he has a contact page. So you can contact him that way. I want to thank you all so much for listening to my podcast. And thank you all so much for supporting me and sticking through me with my, through my sickness because I'm really sick today. But I'm still doing my interviews. So thank you so much for supporting me. Have a great day. Bye.